Well, I'd say it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I'm excited this morning. I, I'm like the brother over here. I, I feel him moving already, and I'm I'm getting excited. I, we don't visit many churches that's like this. I feel like there's a I don't know there's something about to happen. And uh, it feels good this morning. But, uh, I hope revival does break out today. You know, I, I'm hungry for it. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. I believe if we're going to ask, we should believe. Y'all pray for us as we try to sing. Just lift up His name. Find the words here. <laughs> On the Isle of Patmos, John began to say, The Spirit, it came on me, it was on the Lord's day. Do you say 
I spoke of your honor. I have no defense, but that's when mercy won't Oh, mercy won't And bring it back. Call to the stand. Was God saving grace? So blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy won't Just how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free? My chains were all broken. I just been born again. That moment when mercy walked in. Try a new one right here. If I can find it. It's called I'm Not Going to Hell. And if there's anything we can praise Him today, if we're born again. Thank God we're not going to hell. Like your brother said, there's no in between. You can't land in between heaven or hell. You're either going to one place or the other. And as I stand today, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to heaven. Because that blood, and I thank God for that. In sin I was living, the thought I had given of dying, but where I would go, I was looking at life, so hard I was trying to gain all this world had to go. No peace and no pleasure, that I even measure with all that I had to gain, I repented and prayed. Christ saved me that day, and now I've got something to say. Oh, I'm not going to hell. I've met the Savior, what a story I tell. I'm saved and forgiven, set free all is well. Oh, I'm not going to hell. I've been forgiven, Christ made a real change in me. Now I'm no longer crying. I think of dying because heaven is waiting for me. And now still alive. He's always trying to lead you down the wrong way. Just call Christ's name and he'll save you today. Oh, I'm not going to hell. 
listen to the words of this song right here, you know, we're not worthy of any of the blessings that God gives us. And I'll be number one to admit it. And uh, God's been awful good to me. Y'all just listen to the words of this song right here. For all the pretty sunsets and each peaceful stream in my way to sing and in my barren desert where nothing else grows even in the valley you sit with me a road you sit with me a road In a world so filled with strife, Lord, thank you for the roses you place 
Thank the Lord for saving me and all He's done for me. I can never praise Him enough. Amen. Well, sing, did I mention it? If nothing else, I want to say I mentioned I love Him. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
they know me cry. Little John said he is precious by leaning on his bosom. So for a moment, may I humbly testify. Did I mention that I love you? How I worship you. He makes a way. He makes a way, and did I mention He's been faithful to every promise He ever made? I love Him. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna do this one for Brian back there. He requested this. It's called "It Was Me." Their heads were low, their steps were slow, as they walked along that long Emmaus road, then a man appeared, and as he drew near, he said, why are you so sad? Are things really that bad? And they 
said so Have you not heard Why you must be a stranger In this town For the one who came In the Father's name Well he has been cut down they played his body in the ground. Oh, but as they walked and talked, he began to explain about this Jesus. He began to that old preacher of preachers. He began to preach. He said, in the wilderness, the children. He said that was me. Said that was me. Oh, that was me. Yeah, I'm the one who died for you at Calvary. It was me. He said, Who loved you when no one else would? And who saved you when? That was me. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank the Lord for saving me. You know, we didn't have to beg and plead God if we had our hearts set right when we asked Him, He saved us. You know, I thank God for that. I know with a room, people this size, somebody going through a hard time, whether it's cancer or some kind of sickness or sin sickness or whatever it is. But you know, if we keep praying through until that storm passes by, you know, He'll be right there. God ain't changed. Because God, we read about the Bible. He's no different today than He was back then. For some reason, we think He can't do that kind of stuff for us. For some reason, we've, we've made Him some kind of old fable that just, you know, it's a fiction story. It can't happen. I tell you today, He's alive. And he's willing. We've changed. We're the ones that changed. I feel like we don't live as close as they did back then. A lot of times, we don't. No, we don't walk hand in hand with Him, but we can walk right with Him by faith. You know, it's not sight, but it's by faith. One day it'll be sight. Thank God. But you know, if we just pray through, 
and have that faith that they did back then. You know, we can see miracles happen. We can see revivals break loose. We can see people heal. But you know, a lot of times it's a lack of faith on our end. You know, sometimes He decides not to answer. But taking them home, I tell you, that a lot of times that's a better answer than what we pray for. Anytime old saint goes to heaven, I said the other day, we should be rejoicing. But y'all just listen to the words of this song. If you're going through a storm, keep praying. Keep the faith. Until the storm passes by, you'll get through it. Just listen to the words of this song. They thought that they would die Cause they failed to remember That the Master was not And He spoke these words And the winds all stood still And even the waters They obeyed His will And He calmed their storm just like he will mind if I just remember that he lives inside. And why should I worry? Why should I fear when this very same Jesus he is always so near? He lives in my heart and he hears. So I'll call on His name Till the storm passes by We read in the Bible How He walked with them Brought light to the darkness When the way grew so dim And how great it would be To have His footsteps in mind and walk with the Master all of the time. And when trials come and death seems so nigh, I'll just call on the Master. I know He'll get there all the time. And when sickness comes and my body's in pain, This very same Jesus, He is always so near. He lives in my heart, and He hears when I cry. So I'll call on His name till the storm passes by. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? When this very same Jesus, He is always so near. He lives in my heart, and He hears when I cry. So I'll call on His name till the storm passes by. sing one more, get out of the way, and let the brother bring a message. This song, uh, one of our uh, most requested songs, I'm No Longer an Orphan. Thank God I have him call my father. And they would call him my father. You know? Thank God I'm no longer an orphan. Once my clothes were ragged, the world looked down on me. I had no hope for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, 
I've heard these uh, young fellows before, and it's a blessing to be in the same church with them because I, I know that I can feel the Spirit within them. You know, I've heard them at a couple of revivals, and I sure do appreciate them coming. Amen. And I'd like to invite them back to any time they'd like to come back. they come back to be with us. Uh, just a couple of quick things to pass on. If I can find my note, I don't know what I've done with it. But uh, let's remember business meeting coming up this Saturday at uh, 7 o'clock. We're going to have a lot of hard decisions going to be coming up pretty soon about the building and stuff. As you can tell this morning, we're running it over with, you know, it's a blessing that we've got so many people here, but we're going to have to do something about making room. So, but uh, Brother Eric's working on some plans and stuff, so hopefully he'll have something as far as this coming business meeting. And then from there, we'll look at them and see where we need to go. But it's very important if you want to voice your opinion to what's going on to be here, not only about the building, but about the other things that goes on in the church, how the church operates. You know, we don't want to hear rumors, well, they're saying we shouldn't have done this or shouldn't have done that. You need to be here and voice your opinion, whatever it might be. Okay? Uh, the system is we'll vote on it, whatever comes up. You know? So let's remember this this Saturday. Uh, we're trying to get this call tree, which is the phone system to call people about messages. And uh, Brian, uh, Amanda and uh, Helen's been working on getting this done. And uh, Brother Mitchell agreed to pay for it for the first year. I appreciate that, Brother Mitchell. But what it is, they'll call and give you a message on your answer machine or whatever, or leave a message for you. You know, if the church gets canceled for some reason or something's going on in church, like they've got donuts to be picked up or T-shirts are here or whatever the case might be, that'd just be a reminder to let you know what's going on. But they'd like to have just one phone number per household because, didn't you say it's limited to... So we just thought if we did one number per household, that way we could keep it underneath that 250. So I'm going to start this list around and get people to put their phone numbers on here. Uh, does the youth have any announcements? or?
nothing. Huh? I don't have nothing. They uh, steal some t-shirts out in the fellowship hall that hasn't been picked up. T-shirts and sweatshirts. Yeah, so if you've ordered shirts and they've not been picked up yet, they're out in the fellowship hall after service. Uh, let's remember the Bible's up here. The food pantry downstairs. If anybody needs any food. Uh, the little girl that we've done Christmas cards for but back before Christmas that uh, Louise brought up, uh, Addie, it's, she's in Utah. She was wanting Christmas cards for Christmas. She's uh, dying. They said she probably wouldn't make it through the next year. But she got over a million Christmas cards for Christmas. That's the Lord working. And keep praying for that young lady. She's just six year old, but she looks uh, she weighs like a three year old and stuff. She's really struggling. So remember her and her family. Uh, any other announcements? Anything else? Birthdays and anniversaries since the last time you here. Birthdays. Got one. Two. Two. Uh, a lot of people born in January. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. I'll turn it over to whoever wants to sing. <coughs> Please? Rick, you feel like it? Or? I'll get Buck a book. They tell me to give you a book. your book and turn to page 479. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
482. I can't believe that. You need a little more? Yeah. I think you can take away. I'll 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 take minutes this morning. Um, I'd like to thank God for what we've heard and what my heart has felt. I thank God for the presence of an almighty God. You can sing, shout, carry on all you want to, but if it don't have the Spirit of God in it, it's not worth anything. It's just a, it's just a show without the Spirit of God. Amen. I pray to God this morning, amen, we're going to be a praying for these young people that sung this morning, these young men. I pray to God that God would have put His anointing upon you. I pray to God that He'd lead you in His Word and you can get deeper in the Word of God than anybody's ever been. I pray to God this morning. Sure, I can feel that. 
I pray that God would use you for His glory. Amen. Amen. And every song would come out of your mouth would be anointed and it would touch people's hearts. Amen. I, that's what I pray this morning. Praise God. I, I pray to God that God would move here this morning. Amen. Been up since way, amen, way before daylight this morning of praying and seeking God's face. There's a verse of Scripture came to my mind and I, I run all over Horse Creek of feeding horses this morning about daylight just to go check and see if they're still in the field and pray. Amen. I like to get out on Sunday morning by myself. Amen. Talk to God. And, and some of my best praying is in the barn down there feeding them old horses early on Sunday morning. Amen. And I thank God for what I can feel and what I've heard this morning and for what God showed me this morning. Amen. Now praise God, I want you to listen and I want everybody in this church to pay attention this morning. Whether you're young, old, middle-aged, it don't make any difference. What age group you're in this morning, I want you to pay attention. Because today may be the last message that you'll ever hear God's Amen. Word preach. And if it is, and it's, if it's for you, and you miss it today, today may be your last chance. Amen. 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 Say, preacher, you've lost your mind. Honey, we're living in the last moments of time. This is not the last days. This is the last moments of time. Amen. Amen. For He told them in, in Matthew 24, He said, when you see these signs come to pass, he said for you to look up, for you know that your redemption draws nigh, even at the door. That's Amen. Right. The men of God preach in the Word of God, brother. About a day, it was the last days that they lived in. Amen. Us as God's people have seen things come to pass, brother. I sat here watching you sing, and I can remember when you was the same age as your little boys. Amen. Praise God. I watched him grow up. Made a man of God. Amen. And I thank God for him. But I want don't you listen to me. Time has went on and the Word of God has been fulfilled sure. by the Word of God Amen. and by the power of Almighty God Amen. in our day. Amen. Right down to the day we're living. You're no longer in the last days. You're in the last moments of time. Yeah. And you can play with this thing till you die and go to hell. But if you miss it this morning, it'll be your fault, not mine. Amen. Amen. Because I came Amen. to preach what God said to preach. Amen. Sure. Bless you, Lord. I want you to listen. You see, I don't know why you come to church. I come to do business with God. Amen. This is a house of worship and a house of praise. A house of prayer. Amen. I don't know why you come. I come to praise Him and to worship an Almighty God. Amen. A risen Savior. A God that can do anything right down to the uttermost. Amen. I've heard this mama pray for the last year for her boy Robbie. Amen. Amen. I saw her pray for her husband, Hank Darnell, for a many a year. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He took a sickness in this little sister's mind and in her brain. Amen. To bring her husband to the house of God. But I thank God, brother, He's got you here. Amen. Amen. And I'm here to tell you this morning. Hey man, Robbie's had a bad day. Because Mama's faith has kept calling out to God. And she knows to touch. And he's a coming in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Mama, don't worry anymore. Amen. Amen. Don't worry anymore. God heard your prayers. Amen. He's a coming. God said He was. Say, preacher, how do you know? God told me He was coming. Amen. You might lie to me, but God don't. Amen. God saw her faithfulness. Amen. When she can't even walk, she's at the house of God I'm praying for her son. Amen. Don't tell me, God, that I serve won't honor that. Amen. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> I ask him Wednesday night, what are you going to do when God answers your prayer? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sister, praise God, claim it. It's done. Say, preacher, you lost your mind. Well, just get out of the way and watch you. Right, come on. That's These people way. know I'm crazy. My family knows I'm crazy. When God tells me something, it'll happen when it's it. Amen? God's going to take care of your back. But you've got to believe God. Amen? 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 You pray this morning. God's got something for somebody sitting right in this house this morning. If you'll listen, that's what God said. Amen. 
One verse of Scripture in the sixth chapter of the book of John came to my mind way before daylight this morning and I was sitting here listening to the song sung. As they began to sing the songs of Amen, the power of God are moving in this place. Praise God, there were Scriptures and God just kept talking to my mind and talking to my heart. And I'm going to preach a little bit, Keith. Amen, somebody needs Jesus. I don't know who you are. Somebody's been living afar off, praise God. I don't know who you are. You need Jesus. <coughs> You've been living for God, you know what you need more of Jesus. Amen. You're going to need more power of God for the day to come, amen, because you're going to be a minority and you already are. Right, come on. I ain't preaching religion. I'm going to preach to you salvation, something that will change your life. Amen? Amen. Now, I like to... Lord have mercy, brother. You struck a chord in my heart. <laughs> Praise God. I like to tell people what God done for me. Tell him up, Lord. It's my testimony. Amen. I don't know what He's done for everybody else, but I know what He's done for me. Amen. And I'm fixing to tell you here in a few minutes. But I want you to listen to what the Word of God said, and I'm going to get down to business with God. And I want you to listen every year, listen and every eye. I want you to pay attention. Because if today's your day, amen, you better not miss it today. Tomorrow amen. may not be like today. Amen, amen. brother. Amen. God ordained this today. <laughs> I believe before these boys was ever born, God knew they'd be at Pleasant Chapel Church. Amen. You believe that? Amen. I believe that. Before God ever ever let me be born to marry an R. H. Lyles, a man in Smithport, North Carolina, God knew that I'd be a preaching at Pleasant Chapel Church this morning. Amen. Come on. Woo, praise God now. He knowed every face that would be ascending in the benches at Pleasant Chapel Church this morning. Amen. He's come to do business. I believe that for all my heart. I'm gonna read one verse, amen, out of the Sixth chapter of the book of John, and I want you to turn with me to the fifth chapter, and I want to read just a little bit to you. And I'm going to preach God being my helper. One verse in the sixth chapter of the book of John came to my mind, sister, this morning, and every scoop of feet I'd get out of the freezer, it just grew up through my mind. And I'd pour it into them old horses, and I'd start to walk off, and I'd listen at them chew. Amen. And praise God, I carried the water. Amen. The dogs' waters froze up, and I went and watered my dogs this morning. Amen. I just kept a praying and every step of Scripture come to my mind. And I want you to listen to me this morning. We're living in a day and age that we live that religion has taken over. People are trying to do things without God. They're trying to do things without the Spirit of God. Man is a teaching people, amen, that you just live your life to the fullness, amen. And then when you decide that you want to come to Jesus, amen, then you just come on and it'll be all right. But it don't work that way, amen. You don't get right with God just any time you want to. You get right with God when God's a dealing with your heart. Or you won't get right with God when I get an amen. Now, whoo, praise God. Now, that will love your brain. Amen. Then I'm going to preach a little here in a minute. But the 44th verse of the 6th chapter of the book of John kept coming to my mind this morning. And I know God wants this preached because I can feel it. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. The Bible said that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Praise God this morning if you're here and you're lost without God, the Lord Jesus Christ is looking for you. Amen. And if you're a man lost without God, if you slip back, slid on God, you're not where you ought to be with God. He's looking for you. Amen. And I've got news for you. He knows exactly where you're at. Praise God. He knew where I was before I ever knew Him. Amen. I'll get that for a minute. The Bible said, Amen, now listen. He said, No man can come to Me except the Father which has sent Me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Did you hear what I said? He said, No man can come unto me, and this is Jesus a talking, except the Father which sent him draw him. Without the Spirit of God, a dealing with your heart, and a drawing you to this man called Jesus, you cannot be saved. Without God a drawing you to the space of repentance. Amen. Praise God, and I'll explain that. That's when men and women come to the place in their life. That they're willing to lay down the hell they're in and pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Amen. 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 You come to that place for yourself. Amen. You'll never get right with God. Amen. Amen. Woo! Praise be unto God. 
I see it all the time. For one reason or another, people come to an altar and they pray. But it's not for their self. They're bargaining with God. God, I'll do better if you'll do this for me. But that's not the way it works. God's not in the bargaining business. You'll come God's way or you won't go. And I'll explain that in a minute too, sister. I know a lot of people that proclaims to be right with God and they're still drinking, still doping, still whoremongering, doing all the things that they've done before. Amen. And that tells me they're still lost. Uh oh, come on. You don't have to like me. You don't have to come back. But you're going to hear it today anyway. Come on, brother. Because today may be the last day, Jimmy Amen, brother. Did you know that? Amen. If today is the last day in this world, brother, amen, I can stand and say I'm saved by the grace of God and I am not going to heaven. You know how I know that? Because I have got the blood applied in my life and I'm no longer a sinner, but I'm a child of the King. Can I get an amen? Come on, does anybody know what I'm preaching about? Praise God, I'm not a sinner. Yeah. Praise God. You ain't no longer a dope addict. I'm sorry, brother. Come on. Praise God, you're a child of the king. Yeah. Not everybody that's in your life knows it. Whew, look at it. Yeah. I've been took around the church more than any preacher in this country, bro. Because of preaching about evidence. You know why people don't want you to preach about evidence? Because they ain't got none in their life. Amen. Preach it, brother. Come on, man. And if you ain't got any evidence of the Holy Ghost abiding in your soul, praise God, you ain't got it. You can get mad at me if you want to. He said, without the Spirit of God, you're none of His. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I got to preach just a little bit. I want you to see something this morning. I'm excited to see the whole thing. These boys are singing my God, I can see things in my life. Woo! Lord, it tires me up. I don't know why people don't get tore up when God goes to move. Huh? Amen. Only I can figure you would sweat. Or you ain't got what I've got, so preach you crazy. Praise God, you got what I got in here, it's gonna move somewhere. Amen. 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 Lord have mercy. Come on now. Surely somebody knows what I'm preaching about. The God that I serve is not dead, brother. He is the one that done it all. And He lives in my soul. I asked somebody the other day, praise God, how are you going to hide a bigger thing as God if He's alive in your soul? Amen. Come on. He said, greater is He that's within you than He that's in the world. Praise God. Uh -huh. People say they can't control the flesh. My God, I don't even try. You know who's controlling? The man that's living inside of me. Amen. <coughs> Fifth chapter of the book of John, I want to read some scripture to you. And I'm going to preach. I want you to listen. I want you to listen good this morning. Lester, you know I'm not playing games. If the Lord came this moment, and said it's over. I just wonder how many sitting right in this congregation could go to heaven. You see, everybody you ask going down the street, everybody's going to glory. But everybody ain't living for God. Come on. I believe if you're right with God, you're living for God. Huh, come on. Don't get quiet on me now. Because we're going to have me. Praise God. Huh? Yeah, bro. I thought about that when they were singing. I'm the one. You see, when he was praying in Gethsemane's garden over there, he asked the Lord to, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass to me. 
He said, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Amen. I believe he looked down through the corridors of time and he saw me. And he saw you. And he saw everybody except you. I believe he looked down through the corridors of time and he said, I'll say that and he'll preach. And I'm going to send you to a little white church up at three talk. And he Amen. said, I'll have one over there, Lord. Oh, he said, I'll have him there. You draw him. Woo! He said, Lord, when I get tired, praise God. Hey. Father, I'll have him there in the back of that church. And he said, Father, you draw him. And he said, I'll save him. Hey. Woo! Yeah. He had it ordained from the beginning. He saw that church when he prayed. He saw Tony Elder. He saw your life right down to the And praise God. He Yeah! yeah! Glory to God! Hey. I'm going to tell you who else he saw here in a minute. i got to read this. And then I'll tell you about me. I know about me. Whew, can't understand it, Cliff. My heart's running about 500 miles an hour. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling BJ something yesterday, a man who is out moving horses and fixing fence. I was telling him, I said, I've seen a whole lot happen in 20 years. I've seen most of it happening right here in this church. Amen. Hey, I got to read this and preach, well. Somebody needs this this morning. I want you to listen. Fifth chapter of the book of John, I want you to listen to every word. The Bible said, Amen, in the first verse, fifth chapter of the book of John. It'll go right along with the scripture I just read to you. <laughs> no man cometh unto me except the Father which sent me, draw him. He said, In the last days I'll raise him up. You know, in the sixth chapter of the book of John, there's another verse of scripture. It's pretty, pretty, pretty uh, Amen, part of it. It's just favorite to me. He said, Amen. He said, Is it? Father's will had all he'd given to me. He said, they're coming to me. and no wise would I cast one out. Amen. He said, in the last day, he said, I'll raise him up. I thank God today. Man may put a, 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 man, a limitation on this thing. You may not be good enough. You may be so bad that God can't touch you. That's what man will tell you. But the Bible said that way man and all that the Father given to me, He said they come unto me and in no wise would I cast one out. Amen. You see this man called Jesus has never thrown one away. Amen. For surely if He'd have gone to throw one out and cut him out and pitch him to the side, old eight miles would have been the one that wouldn't have been fit for the kingdom of God. But thanks be to God that He made a way for me and He made a way for you and I'll get to that in a minute. The Bible said, Amen. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Amen. They were all there, diseased, and a laying in sin. And they were waiting on what I just read to you in the 6th chapter. The moving of God. They were waiting there on the porch of affliction and the Bible said there was a multitude that laid on these five porches and they laid there and all they were waiting on was for God to move and to touch them in their life. Do you realize, Brother Keith, and I, I saw it happen, they many a person that sat in the house of God Sunday after Sunday awaiting for one thing to happen and that's for God to reach down out of heaven and take that mighty hand and reach down and squeeze our heart. Amen. amen. And praise be to God. God's doing that this morning. Amen. amen. One time in my life, and we may be here a while, God sent me to King's Fort to preach. Never been there before in my life. Never seen the church. Didn't know anybody there. I don't even know how they got me to come over there. But I'll never forget the meeting. I like to scare the preachers to death, sister. 
I was on my tractor, uh, baling hay that evening. God spoke to my heart. He sent me over there where God spoke to Moses in the burning bush. And He said, go get my people. <coughs> and He said, you go tell them at Kingsport I've sent you to get them. That's what He told me. Now I don't know if they thought I was going to shoot everybody. I don't know what they thought. But there was five preachers lined up on the front bench. And when I went to tell them what God said, amen, they turned as white as your shirt. And they went to looking at one another. Amen? Brother Keith got me outside that night and he said, you scared that bunch to death. I said, I can't help it. God told me. And I told him, brother. I said, God told me on my tractor this evening, I have come to get you. I come to get somebody. And this is what God said over there in that Scripture. He said, I've heard the cries of my people and I know their affliction. Woo! Glory to God! And when I began to preach, amen, they started to cry again in the back of the church. Amen! And when they started walking the aisle for Jesus, him old preacher know that I done touched the throne of God. And God had sent me to get somebody. Praise be to God this morning. You see, God didn't lie to me before daylight this morning. You're here. How long you been laying watching things go around you? I was there for a long time. I laid there for a long time in sin. My affliction was alcoholism. Amen? I told somebody the other day at work, brother, testifying to a young man there at work, and I began to tell him that I wasn't always a preacher, I ain't always been saved. There's three years in my life that there's nothing but a black place because I was drunk all 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I wouldn't quit till I passed out somewhere on my property or in my house. You see, my afflictions that I laid around and waited on God to move was alcoholism. Amen? Three years in my life, there's a black place. No man. People will say, you remember what went on such and such a year? I said, I don't even know what happened that year. Amen? And the reason I came because the white liquor and the drugs of this world, praise God, burnt my brain up. There is no memory. And sister, I suffer today because of... See all these markers in my Bible? When a verse of Scripture comes to my mind, I can't quote it like these other preachers. Chapter and verse, I can't find it. Because my mind, I gave it to the devil a long time ago. And the drugs and alcohol burnt the brain cells up. Amen. Killed it. Most of my brain was dead. When God found me. Feeling my bones. So when a verse comes, Sister Shell, praise God, I grab me a marker. Woo! And why it's on my mind, I find it in a precious book and I mark it, amen. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. You see, my affliction was alcoholism. My girls didn't know me then, and I thank God for that. Casey didn't know me then. I thank God for that. You see, some of you don't know where I come from. You don't know nothing about me. But I do. The Bible said they were there and they laid there waiting on the moving of the water. Amen. Amen. You know why I didn't give up on you? Because I know if I could get you to the place that you could see God move, it would change your life. They began to sing about walking into the courtroom and mercy came in. I remember the prayer that I prayed for you <coughs> over on Big Horse Creek over there going down below Farmer's Store that evening. You remember that evening? When we was riding the horses, they may not block the sheriff's skittish. Wouldn't let them catch you over there. You know why the preacher stood in the way of the law, amen, of catching you and they wouldn't let them get to you? It's because God said, I had something to tell you. Hey, Woo! Yeah, look out. Hey, hey, man. Yeah, look out. And God told me to tell him, and going down the road, he's sitting here, I'll tell you the truth. He's facing jail time. 
Amen? Fixing to go to court. And God told me to tell him. I said, when you go in the courtroom, God said that for you to look around because He's going to show Himself to you. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Look out. You know what He said? I told Him. I said, you just got to trust God. He said, I have a hard time trusting anybody. You remember? Amen, brother. Oh, I remember what I told you. Word I said, word. God is not just anybody. Hey. My God hey. is everything. Hey. He's almighty. Hey. He's supreme. Hey. He's all powerful. Hey. Amen. Hey. Break it, bro. Look how I'm breaking my fly. I couldn't wait till he went to court. <laughs> hey, I may be the craziest preacher you'll ever meet, but I don't, I'll tell you right now. The God I serve that saved me can save anybody. I get to this cemetery project. I'm going to take my time. I ain't going to get in no hurry. So I told him, I said, You look. When you go to court, amen, I said, you look. Come on. Because I said, God's going to show himself. He was so convinced, praise God, that he's going to lock him up. <laughs> he didn't believe what I told him. You know why? Because going down there to get him a motel room, he stopped and got him something to drink and pulled a bit drunk. <laughs> so, preacher, you don't tell this song. I tell it all the time. Praise God, somebody needs to know the truth. <laughs> you don't care, do you? <laughs> so that night, I got a, a message from Sister Michelle. Hey, Amen. My youngest daughter had sent her a message and told her, "Said you get in touch with my daddy." Said you got to get in touch with my daddy because when my daddy prays, heaven moves. That's what she told her. Michelle said, "Don't get excited. Don't be afraid. She just wants you to pray." So I rolled out of the bed and I fell on my face, stiff, and I started calling on the God that I believe in. Down yonder next to Cherokee, there's an old boy who felt the fire of God. You know what happened? His blood pressure shot up. His brain's just about busted. Hey man, got sicker than a dog. You better not be a drink and let the preacher pray for you. Hey <laughs> man. Come on, I believe it. Really, <coughs> sicker than a dog. I'm telling you, just like it happened, ain't it? Heaven come. But the next day he went to court. We got down on our knees at the job site, Brother Eric, and began to pray. Me and my <laughs> Couldn't wait to get the phone call. So I got the phone call, Daniel. Praise God, I asked him. I said, just tell me what happened. I said, you ain't going to believe it. I said, just tell me. I want to know what happened. I'm going to preach a little. Somebody needs this. Amen. They said, you ain't going to believe it. I had four counts against you. Fixing the Lord. Fixing to lock him up. Hey, Amen. <laughs> The judge walks in with a stack of papers, amen, against him, amen, looks at him, reads him, calls his name, amen, dismisses his, amen, listen, dismisses him, sends him home, didn't even charge him, amen, for anything. Amen. I just ask him one question. How good is my God now? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He began to see the power of God move. First thing you know, he got along with God. Got to baptize him here a while back. Praise God, he ain't the same man he used to be. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we know that, don't we, Jack? I got to get on down here. I'll never get through this. You see, my affliction was alcoholism. I was lost without God. You see, I thought that was a way of life because, praise God, that's all I ever done. I'd go to mom and say, man, on Easter, me and dad would get drunk. <coughs> I'd go to my mom's on Christmas and me and my dad would pull a week's drunk. <coughs> That's the way it went. <coughs> so God saved His Son and called Him to preach. Amen. The drinking stopped. 
Can I get an amen? amen. Somebody's got to see this, sister. The Bible said amen, and he's waiting on the moving of the water. Verse 4, he said, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease, amen, that he had. You see, it don't matter to God what's wrong in your life. Because Jesus hung that on the cross. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You see, Jesus hung alcoholism on the cross. They began to sing that song, Amen. And I began to look around what God had done for me. And I'm going to give you something here, and then I'm going to go on preach just a minute. And I want you to listen real close. I want to tell you what happened tonight. I got saved. I'd been out on four day drunk, been out drunk for four days. Kayla was just about two years old, I'll never forget it. I come in on Sunday evening, praise God, and my wife had packed up some stuff and took my little girl and left. And I don't blame her. But I had some old hounds in, right where I've got them old hounds today. And brother, I can take you to the spot of grass that Sunday evening where a voice come out of glory and call my name. Amen. Amen. Two weeks went by and God dealt with my heart. Then they started a little old revival down the road, Jim. You know who that revival was for? Just like this, this meeting here this morning is for somebody. It was for Dave Lyle, the alcoholic that lived on fire. You know? My God, God had already made arrangements. Amen. That He was going to bring me this son. Hey, that... Woo! Can't understand it. You better look at it. I went down there that week sat right in the house of God and lied to a little old lady now back then ain't like it is now people talk around everything but back then them old people look you right in the eye praise God and they put you on the spot I'll never forget it sister in this road would come to me Looked me straight in the face and she said, Boy, are you saved? And I just hung my head, couldn't look at her, and I told her, Yeah, well, it's live right in the house of God. Huh? That woman scared me. I didn't know what she's going to do next. Huh? Little did I know God's going to save me and let me pastor a church. I left that night lost without God. Went back again and left lost without God. Still wasn't satisfied, bro. But one Friday night, <coughs> God at a little old meeting house, over yonder, praise God, amen, Jesus came by. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget it, Jim. I was sitting in the back of the house, back here about where Tom was sitting, in that little church. And I watched it, amen, and I saw what these men saw on that porch. You see the hey, hey, heaven moved. And Brother Joe, whew, the angel of the Lord came through that church and the Holy Ghost began to move. I sat there lost without God and I watched the Holy Ghost come down this side of the church and every bitch it came to, somebody started to cry. Somebody testified. Somebody throw their hands up because they're feeling the power of God. And when he come around the front of that church, BJ, the old preacher men would jump up and preach every time he'd get to one of them. They couldn't stand it. Brother, that thing come around that church and I was watching it. I, Lord, it started up this eye. And every bitch started to cry. You could see it coming like a wave of water. And it got to the last bench in the corner and it started down my bench. I want you to listen because I'm fixing to preach. And it got to the young man that was beside of me. The one I used to do drugs with. The one I used to sell white liquor to. You see, he got saved and gave his life to Jesus. And he started to cry. He looked at me and he said, Ain't God good? And I couldn't answer because I didn't know God. And the devil said, You get out of here. So I grabbed Caleb up and started to run. And when I turned around, Melinda was gone. And I'll never forget what I saw, Casey, when I stepped out in the aisle of that little church. And I started out the door and I started to turn. And when I looked, 
down that aisle, down that corridor to that little church, I saw a little frail body by, down on the altar, and it was my wife for giving her life to Jesus. You see, I wasn't the only one God was dealing with here. And I started to run, and when I turned to run out the door, amen, Brother Lundy Finley was there. You remember him? Little crippled hands where he got shot, and him all mangled up, and his hands twisted. I, don't, I still believe it was like Philip in the Word of God. God just whisked him to the back of the church. I didn't see him walk back there. And all he done, the tears are running down his face, stretch out the little trembling hands. His sister, when he touched my hand, the power of God played with you. And when I come to myself, there's an old alcoholic bowed down on the altar crying out for God to save him. And you know what happened? Woo! Hey! I bowed down an alcoholic, but I got up a child of the king. Because victory came. The Bible said that if you'll confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he said, Thou shalt be saved. Shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Amen. 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 I'll tell you this day and time, repeat after me. I'd never been taken to church. I didn't know how to pray, didn't know what to pray, didn't know what to say. But I remember crying out, God help me. And that's all I could cry was, God help me. You know what happened? God helped me. <laughs> you see, I can't speak for everybody else, but I ain't been the same since. I was no longer an alcoholic. The taste that I loved every day, sister, I hated it. It make me sick to even smell it. Amen? Been 20 some odd years ago, and not one drop of alcohol has touched my lips since. You see, that's salvation. Amen. Amen. That's not religion. That's salvation. I'm going to preach a little bit. These old boys that laid there, amen, praise God, waiting for the moving of the water. You can't get right with God without it. It's here this morning. And the Bible said, amen, now listen. And a certain man which was there, which had an infirmity for 38 years. Are you listening to me? He'd been there 38 years. And I want to tell you what he saw. I've heard this preached a many a time, brother, but I've never heard nobody tell what this man saw in 38 years. You know what he saw? He saw those that he laid with for 38 years on that porch. He saw them one by one. The power of God stirred the water. And he saw them get in. And they, man, he didn't come back to lay down on the porch. He saw them walking away appraising God. Woo! Amen. And I believe he had a desire for the things of God. And I'll tell you how I know. You say he's still on the porch. He was. But praise God, there was somebody came looking for him. Amen. Because he knew it was his time. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You see, I saw them boys that I used to drink with. Get right with God. I saw some of them pretend to get right with God and just keep on and drinking. They're still drunk. Yep. Yep. <coughs> I saw some of them get right. And they didn't have no more part with me. Amen? Amen. Until I got saved. Yeah. Amen? Now listen to me. The Bible said he'd been there for 38 years. He'd watched everybody <coughs> around him God touch him. How many people in your life have you watched God touch and see the change in their life? I was telling about BJ's life, and here a while back I got an opportunity to preach at Ball Mountain Church. Like scared me to death. I ain't never been to church that big. <coughs> and this young man stood and testified about God saving him out of the drugs and the things that he used to do. And lo and behold, some people would say it's a coincidence. <coughs> But I say God had him there for a reason. Amen. There was a young man in that church, amen, heard his testimony, used to run with him, used to do drugs with him. And you know what he said in his mind? He reasoned in his mind and he said, well, if God can do that for that man, there's hope for me. I'm here to tell you this morning, if God can save this alcoholic and call him to preach,
victory. They lay so for everybody. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. All the lost. Amen. Today's your day. Can I get an amen? He's come looking for you. <coughs> Lo and behold, he laid there for 39 years. And he watched everybody get in this thing. Huh? And you know what he kept waiting on? For the water to move for him. Rob, you remember that Sunday morning you called and wanted to know what time churches are coming? Yeah. Amen. I hung up the phone and I told my wife, I said, get ready. She said, why? I said, Rob's coming. <laughs> yeah. I said, today's his day. <laughs> I've been praying. And Lord oh, God, you better look out. Remember that morning when the water moved for you? Amen. Amen. Hey, it ain't been all that good a road. Been a little rocky every once in a while, don't it? The fresh got some good food. Amen. 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 Keith, your mama prayed. Prayed she left this morning, didn't she? Her son named Keith Roy. Remember the day that the water moved for you. Amen. Your whole world changed, didn't it? You see, somebody this morning, the waters are moving. Everybody ain't going to get this, but somebody, somebody has already got a hold of this, what I'm preaching. Because you felt it and you know it. You know it. The Lord's just saying, come, and the devil's saying, go, run, get out of here. That man's crazy. I'm not crazy. Oh. It's what God said this morning. Four days light, don't it? You remember when the water moved? Amen. Moving this morning too, Amen. Amen. You was about to swim, wasn't you? Amen. And the Bible said, I'm going to go on and read just a look through a few more verses. And I want you to listen. You boys get ready to sing. We're going to have church. <coughs> Amen. I'd like to know how many people believe God this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to see your hands. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Believe God. Amen. Can you feel Him this morning? Amen. The Bible said, Amen. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. Jesus don't care how long you've been there. They ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, He said, Will thou be made whole? Amen. You see, God don't care how long you've been there. All he wants to know this morning is will you be made whole? Praise God. Do you want what God's are giving you? Hey, come on, praise God. The Father loves you enough to send his only begotten son. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Woo! Listen to me. <laughs> if you'll believe, you won't have to perish. Are you listening to me this morning? God, I feel it. Amen. I'm looking for somebody that wants you. And the Bible said, Amen. Now listen to me. You see, Jesus don't care how long we've been there, brother. He asks us all the questions, same question. Will you be made whole? Amen. Will you be made whole? Amen. What do you need this morning? What do you need this morning? The Bible said the impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. And he took up his bed and walked. And all, it was on the same day was the Sabbath day. You know, some of the religious crowd was mad because he healed him on the Sabbath day. I ain't going to get in on that. Because I'll make somebody mad today. But I'm going to tell you something that did happen. When Jesus came back by, 
That man had been there for 38 years was not laying on the pulpit. Amen. 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 He did not go back and lay down. You know where they found him? In the house of God. Amen. Amen. By praising God. Amen. And the Bible said, Jesus said, You'll sin no more lest worse come upon you. Listen to me this morning. Child, I've come to get you. I've come to tell you that today is your day if you want it. Somebody right in this congregation today has been thinking about coming and praying. I don't know why you've waited. Today is just a little more special than any other day because you know what? God touched you. Amen. You see, God touched you and you know what you're feeling this morning? There's a drawing card. There's something saying come. Something to say and come. <coughs> We're praying for you, brother. God bless you, see. You pray for these young ones. Well, Jess, I ain't passed away. There are funerals today. Pray for them. The proudest young man out here last week gave his life to Jesus. Amen. 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 Now this morning. Come on, young ones. Come mind the Spirit of God let's have a church. While these young ones sing this morning, it's time to make your mind up. What have you seen? What have we seen? Seen God move in everybody's life around us. Amen. Saw the goodness of God. I saw it, Keith. But I had never tasted it for myself. But that Friday night when I tasted the goodness of God, my world's never been the same, sister. My God, you remember the night that God sent the wind to you? Praise God, drawed you to an old place and all Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This world don't look the same. Woo! My goodness, go ahead. You feel it this morning? Well, I know the day is coming. Come on. When the Lord. Would you pray? Come on. Come on. And I've made my preparation. For I know it won't be long. Come on. As I keep on Can't you feel it? it helps me Can't you feel day it? By day. Say, preacher, I don't know what to do. I didn't need it. But all I can tell you is, if you'll come give your life to Jesus and let Him be your King, praise God, your world will change. Hey, praise God, the peace of heaven will come in. Woo! Would you come? Get where you need to be with God. Come on. Now can He knows how long you've been there. Come on. Come on, why these young ones are praying? Would you come? Somebody feel the tug of God is God a touching you. Come on. You are come on. Thank you, Lord. Would you be honest with God? Come on. Oh my God, can't you feel it? Somebody's one prayer away. Just call on his name. Come on. Oh my God. Come on. I can feel it, sister. And it's the same. Can't you feel it? I believe God Almighty just slid the wind up. Did you feel that? Yeah, did you feel that? As your time draws me. Some are stirring. Come on. Come on this morning. Come on. What if today's the last day? How many times has God touched you? In 38 years, Brother Lester, this old boy laid there. And he watched God touch. And he comes so close to him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now you cry. Come on. Come on. You beg Thank you, Lord. I can't keep you feel it. Come on. Oh, that's enough. Come on. Your time is through. Come on. The Lord don't care how long you've been married. If He had, sister, He'd have thrown me away. They had people on Little Horse Creek but there was no hope for David Lyles. But they didn't know Jesus. Come on. Can't you feel it? Come on. 
Come on, praise God. Down on your knees. Confess your sins. Come on. Can't you feel it? Let praise God like to pray. Come on, praise God. You don't have to wait. Come on. Sure, can't you feel it? Come on. Come on. Just make your way. We're going to be church. Boys, we're going to be church. This is the last day in this world. Where do you want to spend eternity? All he asked you was, will thou be made whole? What do you want? What do you want? You've seen enough to know that, praise God, you want the best. Amen? Come on. Can't you feel it? Can't you feel it? Come on. Come on. Come on, youngest, don't quit, praise God. Ain't no use to quit if today's the last day. Man. <laughs> Jesus himself. Now you're on your journey. Listen. And it's much the same. Come on. But you're chasing way. This is what I tell people. As your time draws near, I ask me this all the time. So how do I know if God's a dealing with? This is my advice. What brought you to the house of God this morning? You didn't just decide that you woke up one morning and wanted to start going to church. There was something involved. Amen. There was a spirit, a man of love that's been coming around you that brought you to the house of God. Woo! Yeah! Listen to me this morning. I can be The angels of God have hovered around this place. Yeah! And the waters are moving to you. Praise God! Hallelujah! Jesus, my Jesus. Hey, Listen, what he done for? The cross 
us all the way my sins to
Break God, we run over one another to get to us. Can I get an amen? But all heaven is a waiting on us. Amen. Praise God, then we have to think about it. You youngest get you another song. Praise God, we're gonna have me. I ain't a quitting. I tell you what, God, I I know what God showed me about five o'clock this morning. You see, I don't sleep. Hey man. When I do, I'm dead to the world. But when I don't sleep, I'm wired up. Amen. I'm all to pieces. I know what God showed me. I'm going to give you another chance. You see, I ain't quitting. I ain't like this bunch. Amen. Just hit a lick here and there. I know what God said. I ain't about to quit. Amen. I was going to try to go to that funeral today. I thought, praise God, I'll cut her short and get to go to that funeral too. Amen. But you know what the Bible said? Let the dead bury the dead. He said, you go on and preach the gospel. Amen. I believe if somebody here wants to live. Amen. Sing it like it's your last day, boys. Amen. Like it's your last day. Son, sing it like it's your last time in this world. If today, if this means the last, and we go home in about 20 minutes, praise God, sing it like you mean it. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Praise God, this could be the last meeting. The last one could get in. Can't artist it, boy. You better look out. <laughs> Lord, sister, I'm about to go run this thing. Praise God. Amen. Well, I had no Woo! to blame. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. How many times has God got to touch you? And I knew I had to pay. Oh, child, I listen to me. To face him Would you listen to me? How many times did you thought about coming and praying? For some odd reason, you didn't come. But today, it's been on your mind ever since you got up this morning. My God, I can tell you, I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. All these men of God will pray with you. All these sisters will pray with you. Say, preacher, you're crazy. It's that simple. Do you want to turn your life over? Do you want to give it to Jesus? You know who he's looking for, Brother Eric? Them that want him. You know why he come to that old boy? Because he'd seen him there for 38 years. And he knew that in his heart, brother, that he wanted him. Praise the Lord went out here this morning. I know the dead. 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 But is there one person this morning that hasn't come to pray that's got it in your mind to pray? Would you come? Come on. How long has it been since you felt the prayer of God, child of God? That cleanses me. Well, got quiet then. He said, No man cometh unto me except the Father which sent me. Draw it. And he said, I'll raise them up in the last days. You see, God's never put one away that comes to him. It's a sure thing. I told a lady the other day over White Talk. I walked in, she was, play, she was playing the lottery. Everybody looks at me to jump off people to play the lottery. I ain't going to say nothing to you. The only thing I will say is I think it's pretty crazy <coughs> to spend your money, amen, one in five million chance that you're going to win. 
I'm not a gambler, sister, but praise God, I want more odds than that. <laughs> Amen. You see, what I'm delivering to you this morning is a sure thing. Amen. Amen. Everybody that calls on the name of the Lord is a winner. And I don't mean you don't have to take it in bits and pieces. You get it all. Can I get an amen? This is what she said, brother. She said, Preacher, if you was going to buy a lottery ticket, which one would you buy? I said, the winning ticket. <laughs> You see, God ain't told me to play, but if He ever does, the rest of you might as well keep your money in your pocket. <laughs> because it's mine. <coughs> Come on. So you mean you played the lottery? If God tells me to, then you'll see my head on the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> Little country preacher's a millionaire. <laughs> Little do they know I don't need their money. You see, I've got it all. I've never had not enough. It's been slim sometimes. God has always came through. I've never went hungry. I've never had to go naked. Huh? Never not been blessed. Youngins, would you sing another? One more, please. You didn't know you were going to get to sing all this, did you? We're going to have church. I'm going to give you one more chance. Then we're going to have church and go home. I'll tell you like I tell everybody else. You go home saved, made alive, regenerated, a child of the King. Or you can go home lost. That's up to you. But I choose Jesus. The Bible said I lay before you life and death. Choose life and live. Come on. My God, I wouldn't think about it no more. I can tell you what happened at my house. Love came home. Oh my God. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Praise your Lord. Standing there with his hands out straight. Praise God for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, you said, Father, we draw nigh to you, you draw nigh to us. God, I ask you, Father, for this young man a closer walk. I ask you, God, to open up the scriptures. And God plead them into his heart. I ask you, God, this morning. Put him into his mind. Give him a mind of Christ. And God, as he raises this young man, I pray let him be a father and a leader of his family. I, I got a man of God that cherishes the Word of God. I let him meditate upon the Word of God day and night. Hey, thank you, sweet Jesus. I let him be like a tree I planted by the waters. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Yeah, brother, there it is. It's yours. You accept it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He said it's done, Nathan. Walk in. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Listen to me this morning. 
You ain't got what you need this morning. It's nobody's fault but yours. I've done my best to tell you what God said this morning before daylight. That little horse there in the barn, Derek, sometimes she looks at me like I'm crazy as a bit. But... Amen. There's one thing about it. She knows what the Holy Ghost is. She's failed it a many a time. When the fire of God comes down through that little place, Lord have mercy. I know what God showed me. Amen. Has anybody here got what you needed this morning? Praise God. Woo! Glory to God. Go to praise Him, amen. We're coming and visiting. One more time. Feel so good, I can't hard to stand. Amen. I got one more prayer request, and we're going to get these young men to sing another song. We're going to fellowship. We're going to have church. Just turn loose and have church. I believe the Lord set you free. My God, you ought to be free. Amen. There's a little girl, my niece's little girl, little Tiffany, her little Sydney. She's in the hospital. <coughs> got strips so bad that it abscessed it in her jaws. I was aggravating her here the other day down at Mom's and her and her brother. And I asked her, I said, why ain't you been to church? I've been missing you. She said, well, they won't get up and bring us. I said, well, I'll call you Sunday morning and come and get you. And her little brother said, we're not coming. said, you hurt my ears. <laughs> And I promised them I'd get them some earplugs. <laughs> and I've got them some. So if some of you kids that hurt your ears, if I get too loud, we'll get you some earplugs. I don't want you to quit coming. Hey. Hey, man. <laughs> All touching Jesus. Church, if you didn't hear this, this little boy's four year old started taking seizures and now he's in the hospital and his heart's so weak. A man is in ICU. Pray for him. Amen. You see, it could be us. Amen. And why not? We ask God why, but why not? Yes. Why not us? Amen. I thank God for the miracles of God. Thank God for these young men that God's brought into our life. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, 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 done, I'm done praying. You boys get ready because God's fixing to anoint you. Amen. You may have a spell of the Holy Ghost for you, know. Amen. People think you're crazy, but that's all right, too. That's all right. Amen. Just go ahead and cut your side, though, and have it. Have your time, man. We're going to have church.